In this video, I will show you how to improve AI-generated models or 3D scans by adding amazing details with just few clicks. The idea is to use the details visible only in the texture and transfer them to the 3D geometry. Obviously, we need a model that already has an assigned texture and that is why models made by AI are such a great example, because usually they come with a generated texture as well. In my latest video, I showed you how to easily generate 3D models with use of AI, but I couldn't help but notice that some of them had very detailed textures and yet few details were missing on the actual models. So in this video, we will utilize textures to create even more detailed 3D objects, and we will do it for free. The software we are about to use is Blender, and even if you know nothing about it, I'm gonna guide you through the whole process. Let's assume we already have our model and texture downloaded. If you wonder where to get it from, check my previous video. Now open a new Blender file and delete the default objects. Go to File, Import and choose extension that matches your 3D model. I downloaded my file in OBJ format, so I'm choosing Wavefront OBJ. I like working with OBJ files since they contain UV information. Once you have your model imported, let's check if the texture is working fine. Hold Z and hover your mouse over the material preview. Upon releasing the Z key, you will switch into texture display mode. Your model should already have a texture assigned if you used OBJ file extension like I did. If for some reason you don't see the texture on your model, find this little menu here, choose Shader Editor and select your model. Now you can manually find your missing texture. Alright, we have our model and our texture now let's transfer details from one to another. By switching between solid mode and material preview, you can already tell there is a lot of nuances visible within the colors, but completely missing in the geometry. That is, if your texture is more detailed than your model. To fix it, select your object and go to the modifiers tab. Add a displace modifier and don't freak out if it goes crazy at this point. In the modifier settings, click on New, which will create a new texture to control our displacement with. Now go all the way down to the Texture tab and find Open button. Let's find the very same texture that came with our model. Back to Modifiers tab, find the Displacement Strength slider and change its value to something much lower. I will start with 0.01, but it is always a matter of experimenting with the final value. Now you can probably see some ugly borders that correspond with the AI-generated texture islands, which are total mess by the way, but it's ok for us. We can easily fix it by changing coordinates from local to UV. What we just did was basically asking Blender to deform our model using the texture as a sort of a user's manual. But displacement is only effective if the model has dense geometry, so it's what we are about to do next that really makes this technique stand out. Select your model and add another modifier. This time it will be the subdivision surface. At current setup, the geometry is added after the displacement, but we want to have it the other way around. Look closely at the subdivision settings and find this little arrow. Expand it and click on Move to first. The details should already be a lot more crispy, but let's go even further. By controlling this slider, you can increase the levels of subdivision, allowing Blender for much better analysis of the details hidden within the texture. It's super satisfying to watch it getting more and more detailed with every click of a mouse button. 
Just keep in mind that increasing this number over and over will make your model much more detailed, but it will also slow down your computer significantly. Don't push it too far, or else it will crash your session. This is also a reason why we didn't start with the subdivision modifier in the first place. Sometimes the models generated by the AI or produced in the 3D scanning process will have such a dense geometry that subdividing it even further will crush your computer from the beginning or simply bring no improvement at all. That's why I like to start with displacement and increase the levels of subdivision until I'm satisfied with the accuracy. This is also a good time to play with strength and mid-level values in the displacement modifier. Make the strength value higher to get the details to stick out until they are expressive enough and don't look funny. If you need, you can set it to negative value to reverse the effect, which doesn't really work for this model, but it may be helpful for another one. With mid-level, I would go for the highest value of 1, which seems to be the closest to the original shape of my model. You can, of course, play with this value to adjust the object until it looks perfect for you, but be careful not to overdo it if you don't want your model to look like it had a fun Sunday at Dunkin' Donuts. At any time, you can compare your results with the basic model we started with by turning off this little icon. It simply hides the effect of our modifiers. It's definitely cool to see we came from this to that in just few clicks. Now, if you are confident about your computer capabilities, you can add another subdivision modifier after the displacement one, for it will smooth out the final result even more. For this model, however, I will skip this step, as I'm already happy with the outcome without additional geometry. Once you're happy with the result, select Apply All, which will make our modifier's effects permanent. If your model looks good enough for you, skip to the part where I will show you how to export it for 3D printing or other purposes. However, if you are feeling ambitious, I will now show you how to make a very quick and easy adjustments with Blender Sculpt mode. On this example, you can see there are some areas that are not looking great, probably due to some texture imperfections. Not to worry, by switching to Sculpting tab, we can manually adjust the errors. This is not a sculpting tutorial and I'm not going to push you through all the amazing but complicated tools, instead I want to show you how to fix your model quickly and effortlessly. You can fix a lot of imperfections with just three tools, using the draw function, which allows you to add material with left mouse button, subtract material with control and left mouse button, and smooth out the surface with shift and left mouse button. And that's it. There is significant amount of details you can fix with just those three buttons. Add or subtract material to make nuances stick out, smooth out to quickly erase some funny errors. You can also click F to control the size of the brush or Shift F to control its sensitivity. For example, if I want to add some sharp creases in the fabric, I will use F to make the brush smaller, then Shift F to make it intense. A little smoothing out on the edges and it's done. Same goes for fixing those weird incidents here. Smoothing out will do the job just fine. If you want, you can find a lot of detailed sculpting tutorials on YouTube. I can prepare one for you as well. This video, however, is supposed to explain the tools to fix a 3D model in no time, so let's keep it that way. To export our model, let's move back to Layout tab and select the object. Go to File, Export and choose the proper extension. For 3D printing, STL file will work just fine. Check the Selection Only box as a precaution and save it wherever you feel like. And this is the result. Here is the model AI generated for me. And here is the one that required 5 minutes of my time in Blender 
to utilize the texture details. The amount of added value compared to the effort is simply great. Even with my old FDM printer, which is not very reliable with catching details, you can see a lot of improvement on the second model. Now, of course, if you want to use this model for anything else than 3D printing, like game development or animation, you definitely need to do some retopology and UV unwrapping, because on this field the models are going to be a complete mess. But for the 3D printing purposes, the dense and chaotic geometry is completely fine, as long as your hardware is capable of processing it. I find this technique to be very useful for models with already existing texture, since none of the details go to waste. All of those nuances that would otherwise stay within the texture can now be 3D printed with almost no effort. But if you want to learn more advanced tools, like a proper sculpting techniques for 3D printing purposes, just let me know in the comments. And if you want to know how to use AI to generate whole 3D models and textures using just a picture, check out this video on my channel. Thanks for watching and see you soon.